be an exciting match, Colin. I'm sure that uh, Newcomb will give his everything in this match. He'll have to serve really well, I believe, to contain the return of serve of Jimmy Connors, who I reckon has got the best return of serve in tennis today. Uh, he's developed this topspin lob, which he used to affect yesterday when he played Dick Creeley. He'll be using that a bit today because Newcomb likes to crowd in very close. And uh, I'm sure we'll see and the all-round game of Jimmy Connors. He doesn't always come to the net behind his serve. He likes to stay back and rally and uh, move the ball around a bit and then come into the net when the opportunity presents itself. And uh, I think this will call for this will show us a, a very exciting match. Connors in the foreground. That's we're looking at Jimmy Connors at the net, loosening up a couple of overheads. Lobs being thrown up by Jim, just so they can loosen out. To uh, Mike Williamson's announcement made me think of what, uh, particularly Frank. This point, Newcomb could be exhausted. I'm just wondering whether Connors has had enough hard match play. He's walked through this tournament, and if you look at his draw, he has had possibly. I must say it, the easiest draw to a final any champion could have wished to have. They were not players of, of top world renown. Sure, some of them played good tennis in their matches, but he wasn't faced with a Roach, he wasn't faced with a Newcomb, he wasn't faced with even Alexander, who may, we thought, have threatened a bit more. He's had such an easy run as far as tough match play. Do you think he's had enough hard match tennis? He may not have, Colin. He hasn't played a tournament since the South African Open a couple of months ago. And as you say, he's uh, just gone through this tournament uh, very comfortably. But uh, the way he's been hitting the ball suggests that he's lacked nothing in confidence. He seems to be full of confidence. He's not as though he's feeling for any shot. He seems to be hitting his shots with it's a purpose. It's pressure, Frank. That's the only word I'm using. Could pressure in any way ever get to Jimmy? At 22, maybe he's pressureless. <laughs> Well, he showed in the uh, final here last year, also at Wimbledon, also at uh, Forest Hills, that pressure doesn't seem to worry him. I saw him play the final of the Pacific Southwest tournament. Uh, Brendan, you might be able to very quickly pan around to us for the crowd sitting on the grass. I'd like to show you something that's been done by Bren by uh, Brian Bears, one of the uh, members of Tennis Camp. You see how there's kind of a curve at each end of the baseline. The Brian Bears obviously has had to move the crowd so that there's room on the baseline for the players to get to the ball. They certainly don't need quite as much room up near the net, but see how they've curved that, the crowd back, and that is the same at the other end. Somebody being helped away from that crowded area. Mike Williamson back with us again. Colin, uh, I don't know whether you realise that we are going direct via satellite to the United States of America through the CBS network and uh, I think we should introduce ourselves. I'm, my name is Michael Williamson. Beside me we have Colin Long, former Australian Davis Cup player and I think everybody in America would know former Wimbledon, US, Australian, you name it, he's won it. One of the all-time greats in Frank Sedgman. Frank, this is a particular thrill. We only found out a little while ago that we were or are going via satellite to the United States of America and we I think all of us have many friends over there and it's a great thrill. Well, we, I think we're going to show them a, a very good match here Michael. The stage is set the, for a, a wonderful final. The court is in perfect condition and the weather couldn't be better for tennis. We've been a little bit concerned in Australia that, my, that uh, Johnny Newcomb could be wearied after his long match, but he's loosening up very well indeed. I might explain too, Colin, uh, when speaking with Yvonne on the centre court after her wonderful win in the uh, women's singles, ladies' singles, she broke down because her father died a little while back, and in her speech, as soon as she mentioned her father, I was caught unawares. She just broke down and buried her head in my shoulder and... Um, just came over as a, yep. a lovely human That's lady, right. Mike, and uh, I wouldn't be worried whatsoever because no. the crowd just loved the uh, girl, and uh, I think it was just a, an association of... Ladies and gentlemen, I wasn't making apologies, Colin, I was final, not explaining. The men's singles championship of Australia, match between Jake Connors and Jane Newcomb. The best of five sets, Connors has won the toss and elected to serve. Well, that's the first interesting decision, isn't it? That Connors, winning the uh, toss, decided not to give any advantage, immediate advantage away, but serves. I think it's fair to say, Colin, that we're not ready. asked for or given here. 
Ball boys ready? Players ready? Play. Jimmy Connors to serve from the northern end, centre court, Keong, Melbourne, Australia. Stop. Out. Love 15. Of interest to people in America will be this statement of fact. Since Jimmy Connors arrived in Australia, he has made a multitude of friends. More so on this visit. <laughs> 15 all. Thirty fifteen. Oh. Foul. All. Frank Sedgman, you've been through many big finals. You could cut the air down there with a knife. A lot of tenseness down there, Mike. And uh, Jimmy uh, seems to be fairly tense. He's not coming in behind his second serve. He's uh, trying to get in behind his first serve. Thirty forty. Superb return from Newcomb's forehand, one of the best forehands in the game, and he clobbered that one beautifully. 30-40, game break point. Yes. Advantage server. Well, the pattern of play during the past week is that when he gets that short ball on that double hander, he slides it right down into that backhand side, and we saw that example just then. Very difficult shot to handle. See a lot of those today. Fault. Fault. Out. Game, Connors. He leads one game to love. One love, Connors. Newcomb now will take up service. This will be the vital part of the game, if, as uh, we will see when Newcomb serves. If he can put the pressure on Jimmy by keeping that first ball deep and hard, not allowing Jimmy to take over the attacking role with his return of serve. The crowd here today is out, out of this world, really. The, the capacity at Kuyong, seated, is approximately 11,500 to 11,700. With the additional people in boxes on the court side that you can see there, it is estimated the crowd is between 13 and 14,000. And thousands literally were turned away from this highly publicised match, a match that everybody throughout the world, I'm sure, has been looking forward to. Newcomb, Australia, Connors, America. Queued up outside the gates at 5 o'clock this morning. Newcomb serving from the northern end, centre court, Kuyong. Falk. Double foul. Love 15. Foul. 
Falcon. Tremendous reach of Connors claws the ball back so often on good services. Out. Love 30. Well, that's the example of the shot that we're going to see from Jimmy Connors. He hits the ball terrifically hard off that double-handed side. Fifteen thirty. Great shot, John. Thirty all. Win the pattern of this tournament, you can serving himself out of trouble, time and time again. Let. Forty thirty. One game more. Not only a big serve, Frank Sedgman, it's an intelligent one. Well, he's swinging that very wide out onto that double-handed side. Four great serves in him when he was down love 30. Fifteen love. Love. Out. Out. Forty love. Slice double hander from uh, Connors upset the rhythm of Newcomb. Forty love. Connors, he leads two games to one. 2-1 lead to Jimmy Connors. There's one person in America who I think could well be watching this match. I refer to the one and only Rocket, Rod Laver. Rod, if you're watching this match, we send you greetings here from Australia. Frank Sedgman, Michael Williamson and myself, Colin Long, we wish you well and we wish you every success in your match at Las Vegas, Caesars Palace, when you are scheduled to play against Jimmy Connors in early February. J uh, Johnny Newcomb has wanted this match against Jimmy Connors to prove his worth. Here today we're going to have the opportunity to see Connors playing Newcomb in a match that has all the ingredients of sensational tennis. Colin, in the courtside introduction, I could hear a ooh from the crowd when I read out the scores of Newcomb's last two matches. Two five-setters. He won 10-8 in the fifth against Jeff Masters and 11-9 in the semi against Tony Roach yesterday. Both players getting a good hand from the crowd. Newcomb came, uh, he was 2-5 down, wasn't he? In the semi yesterday. In the fifth set, yes. Yeah, a fifth. magnificent recovery out of this out of all tennis. Let say four match points on the way. That's right, and didn't realise it. Net court umpire operating, full complement of very accomplished umpires, carefully selected for such an occasion. Newcomb serving from the southern end. Fifteen love. 
No flamboyant activity from uh, Jimmy Connors. Completely mind on the job. Connors, the ability to attack a powerful service with vicious attack in return. Double foul. Fifteen thirty. In second. Jimmy having a little bit of trouble with his shorts. Now he's ready. Forty thirty. Unlike previous matches, his shirt is out and he couldn't care less. Foul. Newcomb, two games all. Well, the question the experts are asking around the tennis stadium here prior to this match and probably still asking two mammoth five setters in two days, can Newcomb stand up to another long match here? Out. Out. Love 15. Oh. Jimmy, in contrast, Collins only dropped one set in the entire tournament, and that was to uh, Raz Reed in the quarter-final. His draw was a little bit easier, I think, than Johnny's, a lot easier, in fact, and he went through it very comfortably. The attack going to Newcomb's backhand. Oh. Out. 15-30. Four services, four to the backhand of Newcomb, and Newcomb's backhand has won two points, lost two points. There's going to be an avalanche, uh, avalanche of shots to that corner from Jimmy Connors. Oh. Doesn't worry about staying back on that second serve. Can back it up with such great ground strokes. Serve has enough penetration to stop the attack, doesn't it, too? Out. Game. Connors. He leads three games to two. One of the most amazing features so far, Frank, is the service of Connors because we've been complimenting him on serving kick services time after time through the earlier rounds. And in fact, he served aces with them at times, but really I've hardly noticed a kick service in these first three service games he's had. He's he stepped up his pace, his accuracy is uh, unquestioned, and Newcomb is standing the barrage well, at, but at this stage, games have gone with service. Much more power from Connors. 
Well, we were trying to compare his form with last year and the improvement he's made. And the two things that I've found watching him is that he can now kick that ball wide onto the right-hand side of uh, any of the right-handers in that first court. He can kick the ball out wide, which makes it a very difficult shot for the right-hander to play. And also, he uses the lob a lot more and more effectively than what he used to. But we haven't seen him lob at all in this game because he's still trying to get the return of serve going that, with, against Newcomb. But uh, I'm sure as the match progresses and he gets into a pattern and a rhythm with the return of serve, we'll see a few lobs thrown up. He'll do that because Newcomb um, has a strength when he gets close into the net. And one of the jobs of Thank Connors will be yeah. to create some uncertainty in John Newcomb's net attack. And the way to do that, of course, is throw up some topspin lobs to force Johnny Newcomb back. At this stage, even Stephen, because Newcomb has service at 2-3 in the first set. Fifteen love. Newcomb coming in and sitting on that attempted cross court shot of Jimmy Connors. Thirty love. Oh. 30-15 Newcomb having to work out where to serve that second service when there's not so much power does he risk which side Out. Any ball that you can serve onto the left-handed side, Jimmy's quickly dispatched for a winner. Thirty oh. oh. Forty thirty. Connors in two mines, cross quarter down the line, and he in effect played a nothing shot, Frank, when it got down to tours. The well, ball was a little slow in getting to him then. Three games all. Well, Newcomb's been criticised for some months now of doing too much talking, not enough tennis playing. His form has been down, but he's sharp there today, so far. Fifteen, love. We would expect John Newcomb's service to frighten Jimmy's uh, winning style. Fifteen all. Falk. Thirty fifteen. That's walking up to have a look at that spot. No, it wasn't my spin. 
<laughs> we saw one of those in the girls match in a very similar spot to that Frank do a vicious kick there may be just uh, ironically in, a, in what is a beautiful tennis court there might be that one spot 30-15 Connors 3 all Forty-fifteen. And Newcomb has a practice backhand. He knows darn well that that's where the concentration is going to come, and it's got to work that backhand for him to win. Forty-thirty. <laughs> Somebody in the crowd making a little smart comment, which Jimmy didn't greatly appreciate. At 40-30, three all. 10. Newcomb mounting a very strong challenge now through all and juice. Falk. Did Newcomb think it was out or was he beaten by that? I think, he, I think he was hoping it was going out but it landed right on the baseline mm. and then he acknowledged that that was good. The irony of tennis, Frank, Newcomb then noticeably jumped round to set up the forehand and said to Jimmy Connors, go on, have a go at that. Connors obliged, did a three-quarter pace kick service, nothing marvellous, and then Newcomb was mortified when he played a bad forehand into the net. So there's no real evidence yet of where this match will go. The score, Connors, four games to three, but Newcomb serving next, and Newcomb has been serving well. So the pattern of the play is, is only that it's tight with no one seemingly getting a break. If there has been any odd weakness, I think it's the uh, two or three slow balls that have come back to Connors on the baseline and he's missed. I'm noticing, Frank, he's tipping water. He soaks the handle of his racket, the whole handle of that racket, in water before he starts. And as I was watching, he had a glass or a jug of water and he tipped it over the handle and now he's drying it off. You may be interested to know too that down there there are quite a few flies on the centre court today and you, um, you notice Jimmy frequently brushing at his face, uh, undoubtedly he's got some sort of repellent on him, <coughs> but there are quite a few, probably more flies on the centre court today than we've um, had throughout the tournament. Well it'll be our hottest day. Uh, for the tournament, Mike. That's funny, Frank. Is it that grip? grip Why would he do that? To try well, and make it look softer? That. Some players do that, and uh, he perspires a lot in the hands, and uh, he's probably got some sort of rosin on there, and I think that uh, it probably gives him a better grip. Newcomb down 3 4 in the first serving from the southern end. Foul. Fifteen love. In his semi-final against Roach yesterday, Newcomb got three uh, seven uh, net cords in the first three sets. Yes, that's right. Nearly broke Tony Roach's heart. Oh, great return. 
15. Newton has been struggling to find form with that serve, but uh, in the last match against Roach, he suddenly got his rhythm back and now he's serving really well. Fault. Fifteen. Jimmy felt he could have played in a different type of shot then. He had a real hit at that one. Foul. Foul. That's the shot he should play. That's out there. Out. Game, Newcomb. Four games all. The best exponent we've seen of that shot is uh, Guillermo Vilas from Argentina who won the Masters here a couple of weeks ago. He plays that beautifully, doesn't he? Yes. Connors has got a good topspin lob. I thought he'd make that one the way he hit it, but too long. So it's four all, first set. Connors serving. Love 15. Unnecessary shot by Connors. He turned that into a flash shot. Paid a penalty at love 30. Fault. <coughs> First sign of a break at 4 all and love 30. Connors to Newcomb. Very intelligent play from Newcomb. He's starting to use this lob uh, as to his advantage. Jimmy was a bit uncertain on that smash. And of course the one before, he uh, it got over his head. He had to run back and get it. Second ace to Jimmy. They both serve two aces. <coughs> Another one. 40, 30. Oh, three to Connors now. Out. Game. Cutters. He leads five games to four. New balls, please. We mentioned before the size of the crowd here. For the benefit of our viewers in the United States of America, the day here in Melbourne is a glorious one. The flags are moving out, but it is not a hard, vicious wind. The crowd, the, cl uh, <laughs> the sky is cloudless. It's a beautiful blue sky. There's no worries of inclement weather here in Melbourne. The ideal conditions for tennis, the breeze, uh, the stadium at Kuyong is very similar to the stadium at Forest Hills. It's a horseshoe style stadium with a low 
embankment on the left hand side as we are facing the court very similar indeed to the uh, 11 and a half to 12,000 people and today we have an audience in the stands of nearly 13 and a half thousand people jam-packed in in ideal conditions with the weather not that hot that the players should be adversely affected only the fatigue of a long match would be the problem not the heat not the weather and many thousands turned away too queues were lined up at 5 a.m. this morning and that is true as Michael Williamson has said thousands were turned away from this match which has become the talking point of the whole of Australia and we believe throughout the tennis playing world. Oh undoubtedly. You come to serve down 4-5 and the first new ball serving from the northern end. Fifteen love. No players had a point to break service yet. There's been love thirty once on Connors and Connors had fifteen thirty on Newcomb serve. Thirty love. Love. It's a trifle lucky, but Newcomb had that cold and it would have been terrible for him to miss it. 30 love, he's now gone to 40 love, three game points to level at five all. Foul. Foul. Something in the eye of John Newcomb, just temporarily. He's right. <laughs> yeah. 14, 15. That was the lightly rolled lob on the double handed wing, Frank. We were expecting to play that sort of shot on the other hand side just as easily. Should it go to six all, of course, the tiebreaker operates, Frank, and the first four sets of a five-set match, correct? That's correct. The way Newcomb's uh, holding his serve, it could be a possibility. Same with Jimmy. He's, uh, he's only been behind that once. At Love 30 in the last game. <laughs> Gee, there are some tactics being used down there. <laughs> good point. Well, that was good play by Newcomb, and he's, mm -hmm. he's got away with that shot uh, about four times now. <laughs> Belated good shot from Connors. Out. 15 all. Instant tennis lessons from John Newcomb. Get your side round to it. Out. 
Out. 30-15. Very good attacking shot from Connors there, right down the line, pretty deep. Made it very difficult for Newcomb to do anything with that ball. Yeah. Yeah. Turn. 30 all. Of the two players, Newcomb is threatening a little bit more on service than Connors has been able to threaten on his against Newcomb. Forty thirty. Yes. With the speed these fellows play, the importance of their shoes, the, the gripping cap capabilities of their shoes, so important, isn't it? Well, he slipped as he took those first couple of steps in and he couldn't change direction at all. I, th I thought he would have had the ball covered, but uh, he just couldn't uh, change direction. Try again. He'll come in again, I'll bet. Here he'll come. Oh, what a rally, huh? Oh, what, a, what a rally! He's had a seat in the linesman's knee. Yeah. <laughs> Advantage server. I'm getting too old to play like that. Very smart cookie is Mr. Connors. He's taking a lot of time by clamming, clowning around the court, and all the time breath's coming back. He's no fool, is he? No, well, he had to do a lot of running. To run in and back three times then can take it out of you a bit. Yeah, but he got away with it beautifully. The umpire never stopped him, but he's taking a long rest. Oh. Foul. Oh. Yes. Connor's finding this game very tough indeed. Five all, first set on service, it's juice. Out. Out. Chance for the breakthrough. Advantage receiver. First one, Frank, is it? That's yes. first, this is the uh, first break point of the match. And does Newcomb want it? He leads six games to five. Well, well, well. Good tactics on Newcomb's part with that lobbing. Uh, seems to have found the answer to the way that Jimmy takes that early ball and comes in. Doesn't go for the big passing shot, just throws up that high lob. Well, fortunately, he's uh, thrown it up very well and they've been very close to the baseline. And uh, I think it was that point that actually won him that game then.
we commented, Frank, that uh, of the two players, it did appear that Newcomb was applying a fraction the more pressure when receiving service of the two players. And uh, in that game, Newcomb's ground stroke stood up very well indeed, and I, I heartily endorse your comment. Those lobs, whilst uh, Jimmy Connors um, laughed it off a little bit, we noticed he took a long time. He used every ploy in the game to give himself a breather. And the crowd now, of course, logically, Newcomb would be the favoured man on the court with this Australian audience. But there's a very friendly hand for Jimmy. You can't wish for better, and the crowd is lapping it up. It's pretty near 50-50, Colin. Yes, I... Well, it's hard with an Australian crowd not to be a little bit Australian's way, but still, great crowd. They're a very tennis-minded audience here in Melbourne, Victoria, Australia. Newcomb leading 6-5 and the first serving from the southern end. <laughs> Love 15. Thank you, says Jimmy Connors. Well, he races for everything. He gives nothing away. He never concedes a point till it is won. Love 15, 6-5. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Thirty fifteen. Newcomb's third ace, they both both have served three aces. Two set points to Newcomb. Jimmy in a hurry. Right, now. please. Some fool in the crowd. Unfortunate, but I suppose crowd about fourteen thousand. You've got to get one fool. Fifteen love. Jimmy's been stung by the loss of that first set. You took the word right out of my mouth. He's nettled and he's angry. Forty love. Newcomb's showing that uh, the way to beat Connors is that you've got to keep that pressure on serve. And he's been serving extremely well, mainly serving wide to Connors' double-hander, and he's been doing it so well, he's been placing that ball almost on the line. Connors uh, hasn't been able to get settled down with his return of serve, and uh, 
Newcomb's unsettled him by the way that he's also hit his first volley. Newcomb's renowned to have one of the best first volleys in the game and uh, he's rarely missed that first volley, kept the pressure right on and uh, even in that last service game Jim went for a couple of those lobs. The, the volleys were so good and deep that Connors just couldn't quite handle that lob. Newcomb needed that first set if, as we suspect, he could be uh, weary after his marathon five setters of the last two days. The one yesterday was uh, one of the great matches we have one of the greatest matches we've ever seen at Kew Long, and we've seen some fine matches. We think of uh, Tony Trabert playing Lou Hode. What year was that, Frank? About 50 53. 53. We think of many years ago, Budge, Donald Budge, playing against Gottfried von Kram here at this court. Laver and Gonzalez. Newcomb weathered that match, but he needed that first set, I think, to give him a lift, a winning lift possibly even, in this match. He now serves, love one, second set. Love 15. The moment John Newcomb served loses sting to that wide to that side, Frank, he can, he's going to be into trouble. He must keep power. He must keep that serve going out very wide. And hard. <laughs> Sensational return. Love 30. No time to lose service. Newcomb realizes that only too well. Fifteen thirty. Just clipped the post line. I thought that ball was going to go out then and I, uh, Jimmy acknowledged that the ball was good. Oh. We've seen him do this for the last 10 years of his career. Be down in trouble and bring up that big service. 30 all at Love One. Fault. Sheer reflexes, got that point then for Connors, reflexes. Heading for another five-setter. Well, we said he was stung at the start of that second set, and that was a great service game, capped off, unfortunately for Newcomb, with a double fault, his third of the match. Two love, Connors trailing, one set to love down. Oh. Love. Well, there's an object lesson to any young player to watch uh, the way Connors moves in after that serve. He's very quick. Banshees. Connor's beaten on that point. 
15 all. Fifteen thirty. Beautiful service from Roy. Yes. Oh. Newcomb had, in effect, conceded that point, but Cafalt is called and it's juice at two love. Advantage server. Oh. Oh. Three games to love. And John Newcomb, as you can see, walks back very thoughtfully. He didn't have much spring in himself as that final point went away. He won the first set 7-5. He deserved the first set because he was a little bit more aggressive on his ground strokes. He broke through uh, Jimmy Connor's serve at 6-5. But Connors came back hard. The first two games were at fast pace. I thought that one eased a fraction in tempo, but still Connor's right on top. As Connor's putting on an extra pair of socks, probably his shoes are not as close fitting as he would like, and this probably is causing him to slip a little, and consequently he's putting on another pair of socks. But uh, he certainly started off with a, a great game on Newcomb's service, on, his la on Newcomb's last service, and uh, I feel that if Newcomb doesn't keep up this pressure and hit those first serves you in... You mean pace as well as pressure? And pace yeah. as well as pressure. Mm. Uh, he's going to be in a lot of trouble because uh, I feel Jimmy's starting to find the range a bit and uh, John Newcomb's just got to keep him unbalanced and keep him away from getting grooved into that service return. <laughs> He's got some funny mannerisms, hasn't he? You come from the southern end. Oh. He's playing some great shots, uh, Connors. 
If Newcomb doesn't get that first volley deep, uh, then it opens the court up for Connors. Fifth ace, Connors has served three. No. No. Advantage server. Falcon. Yes, you come in two minds whether to let that one go. It was uh, about chest high. Probably would have gone in, but uh, he didn't make up his mind soon enough. Oh, great serve. Advantage server. Six aces to Newcomb. Leads three games to one. There's no coasting there down there on the centre court, is there? Connors to serve from the northern end. Fifteen left. Newcomb took the first set seven five. Connors leading three one in the second. And fifteen love. Love. He gets down behind that volley beautifully, Frank. Did you notice then? Really good shot across mm, court. Beautiful. Didn't come off that tactic, did it? Well, he was trying to move uh, Newcomb around, but Newcomb produced a good forehand down the line. Oh! Foul. Oh. The mover got moved. That's right. 3 1, 30 15. Connors to Newcomb. That was a tremendous attacking shot. He pushed it into Newcomb's forehand and Newcomb couldn't do anything at all but trying to pull it down the line and that was being covered by Connors. Fine tennis. And he goes to 40-15. Two points now to hull service and have a 4-1 lead second set. Game, Connors. He leads four games to one. Knew he'd come back, frankly. I wasn't quite sure just how good he could come back after uh, that first set when Newcomb played at his best to break through at 6-5 and go to 7-5. Well, we saw him do it against Raz Reed. He lost the set against Raz Reed by playing a very flashy type of game on his service game at about 6-5. But uh, he went for a, a rest and came out and he just went 
bang, 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 and six love. He got very upset by losing that set. It looked as though he's feeling the same way here now. When he lost that first set, he he's stepped up his game something great here. Our colleague in, uh, with Frank Sedgman and myself is Michael Williamson. And Michael Williamson has the uh, privilege of handling the courtside announcements throughout the whole of this tournament, introducing the players, etc. Michael, when you were down on the court, what was the atmosphere like before you came up for this match? <coughs> well, as I said, just after I got up here, I mentioned to Frank, Colin, you could cut the air with a knife down there. Really, you know, the tension as such. It's the match the tennis world has been waiting for, Newcomb Connors. Uh, Nuke looked possibly a little more relaxed than Jimmy. Jimmy, a trifle white of face, uh, taut. But, uh, look, I said this yesterday, to take a set from Jimmy Connors is like punching Muhammad Ali in the nose. Trouble's going to come your way immediately. No, it's a great atmosphere down there, Colin. Was uh, Jimmy giving any quips to you this time? Generally, he's, no, during the week no. he's been giving a few little side comments. That's right. No, there were no comments. Nuke just nodded and said hi. Fifteen love. Well, I know someone who will be interested in watching this match, and that's uh, my old pal Pancho Segura. Oh. Oh. Segu? Yes, Segu's had a lot to do with uh, Jimmy's development. And Gonzalez likewise. So the two Panchos, we hope you're watching Gonzalez and Segura. Out. 30 love. Newcomb takes advantage of uh, the handkerchief activity to quietly walk back and give himself an extra 10 seconds reprieve before serving. He leads 30 love to hold service, but he trails one game to four in the second set with Connors taking the uh, with Newcomb the first set in at 7 5. Out. Forty fifteen. Connors leads four games to two. Well, any ace is a good one, but he does bring out some great serves at critical moments. And just to wind that game up, down the centre, and a good yard clear of Jimmy Connors. Great serve. Connors now to take up service from the southern end, leading 4-2 in the second. Let. The seventh game we've struck now in this second set. the backhand.
running him this time, Frank. Fifteen love. A tactical victory, I think, to Johnny Newcomb. And Connors knows that he was he worked very hard in that game. That point. I stay back now. I'm gonna keep doing it, okay? <laughs> I keep coming in then. <laughs> oh dear. Foul. You can happen to go to the baseline. Well behind, but we'll rally. Up it goes. Thirty love. Jimmy's making Newcomb stretch quite a lot on those baseline rallies. Even though Newcomb's getting a few lobs up, uh, he's working pretty hard. Well, it's working hard, Frank. I think of the two rallies, one to Connors and one to Newton. Don't you reckon on energy? Oh. Oh. Fourteen love. I reckon you can sense it. That the Newcomb said, right, I've given you the run route, now I'm going to try and tack while you're puffing. <laughs> and he, he missed his attacking shot. Forty fifteen. The powerful Newcomb harnessing power and using touch delicate tactics to try and break. Connor's routine. Game, Connors. He leads five games to two. One service break, and as we saw in the first set, that was all. Was it one service break or three in the first set? Can you remember back One break? service break, it's 6-5. Uh, that was the only one, wasn't it? It's the only time that uh, anyone had a chance to break serve, the only mm -hmm. time anyone held a point to break serve. That's quite right. Uh, Connors, uh, of course, uh, was 30 all and uh, Newcomb got that lob over his head, remember? He yeah. got three lobs over his head. But uh, this is good tactics on uh, Newcomb's part. Uh, this is the only thing that I feel that he can do to break up Connor's game. I felt when Connor's arrived out here, he hadn't had a lot of match play. He hadn't played a tournament since South Africa. I practiced with him a bit. I felt his condition probably wasn't as good as it could be. He used to get puffed and uh, used to blow a bit after you've had a, you ran him around a bit. Mm. And as you said earlier, he hasn't had a lot of tough matches. We were expecting him to play Phil Dent in the quarter final, and we thought Dent would give him a, a reasonably good match, but Dent got beaten on the way. We also felt that if Alexander got through, Alexander would test him out, but Creeley beat Alexander and uh, Jimmy just handled Creeley without much effort. He was able to lob Creeley out of the match. I'm just wondering whether Newcomb can s slow himself down in these rallies and then at a given moment come back into full charge because basically he's got to power his way through, but he's got to run the other fellow around, break up the rhythm, then go on the attack and you know it's pretty hard, it's like a horse sprinting and, and slowing and sprinting and slowing. The score, Newcomb serving at two games to five, second set, one set in hand to Newcomb, seven games to five. A packed capacity audience at Kuyong.
love 15. Fifteen oh. Thirty fifteen. Fifteen. Thirty. That was the sort of shot that uh, Roach was playing against Newcomb yesterday. He was chipping that backhand very wide. Newcomb had a lot of ground to cover to cover that volley all the time. Foul. Connors leads five games to three. <coughs> New balls, please. That adds to the uh, probability of uh, Connors holding service. New balls. And this service action he's using today, very few kickers on the first services, as we've seen during the week. Mainly a, a fast slice service, which will slide to the backhand side of Newcomb. And the new balls will give it that extra zip off the court. It will make it harder. But Newcomb at the other end, you can see him dancing, jogging, getting himself warmed up and worked up at the same time. Connor serving from the northern end, leading 5-3 in the second. Newcomb took the first 7-5. Lap 15. Isn't that a beautiful shot? Yes, sir. 15 all. <coughs> And that was the reason why the crowd had to be cleared from behind the baseline wide on that eastern side. See the way the crowd's been cut back so as to give room to these players to manoeuvre. Well, thrown in flies. It looked like a last minute change of mind from the lob then, Frank, to suddenly a sluggo backhand and with Connors camped at the net, very little chance for Nuke from behind the baseline.
30 all. Surprising, two very weak approach shots there from Jimmy. Anxious. First, uh, on the first point, he very weak shot into the net. And that one, he had the whole court open. Mistimed it. Taking a lot of time to steady at 5, 3 and 30 all. Thirty. Takes a set point. Frank, nearly impossible to get through uh, him at the net when you the newcomers behind the baseline driving. Well, nearly very impossible. Quick, very quick. I'm sure you would like to prophesy a winner, Frank. No, I wouldn't even ask you that, because that's an Im impossible question at this stage with these two very well-matched players. It's like putting two even fighters in a ring and then being a clever guy and saying who will win. Well, it's not the question that's impossible, it's the answer. <laughs> right, I, I stand corrected. <laughs> I think the longer the match goes, though, the more chance Connors has. Newcomb's had a gruelling week's tennis. He's been fighting... A Form. He's been trying to get fit. He says he's seven pounds overweight when he started the tournament. He's been jogging after his early round matches. And uh, I think this can take a lot out of you, physically mentally, and men yeah, mentally. Yes, Frank, your comments extremely accurate. That's, I agree with you entirely. Newcomb has moments when he lifts up and, and plays superb. And in that second set, there were a couple of patches where... I think you and I both agreed the, the uh, tempo of Newcomb's play went back 5 to 10 percent. Well, he's done a very good job, though, because he's only lost the one service game. He's been in trouble a couple of times, but he's kept that pressure up, and uh, he's been serving a high percentage of first balls in, served seven aces so far. Rather interesting watching the two players in their chairs. I don't know if somebody could tell me the answer, but I was watching... Connors leaning forward, sitting up, toweling himself, leaning forward. Newcomb slumped back in his chair doing the toweling. You know, if you had to say something, it'd suggest that Connors sitting up was the more on the ball than Nuke, who was a little bit saggy. Two sets played, too early really for either player to show true distress and fatigue, but uh, as Frank has been saying, Newcomb's had a rugged tournament and yesterday's match drained him drained Roach and drained the audience and also remember this if, if it does go to five sets Nuke very seldom loses a five setter you look back through his career well he's very good at the five sets he's also very good at tiebreakers thank you ladies and gentlemen anyhow we'll have a few answers coming up on the centre court as Newcomb prepares to serve in the third set from the northern end. He took the first 7-5, Connors the second 6-3. Now into the third. Fifteen love. I'll take a break after this for sure. Thirty lap. Get 
Oh, this is great. <laughs> game, Newcomb. He leads one game to love. Very nice playing, boys. Back in the States, Johnny Newcomb's uh, associates at the, uh, what is it, the T-Bar M. That's the track. They'll be rather anxiously watching, I should suggest, today to see how the, uh, how the big man, Mr. Newcomb, goes. And we're going to the States through CBS. By satellite. My word. Well, it's a perfect day here in Melbourne. Temperature would be about uh, 85. So we say in Celsius about 27 degrees, 28 degrees Celsius and uh, it's been the best day for tennis of the whole tournament. You only brought that up to show how clever you are, Frank. <laughs> well, when I go over to the States and uh, talk in Celsius, nobody understands me. I think we're in for a long day of thrilling tennis. Corners sure now to serve uh, from the northern end. Love 15. Very peculiar looking smash he tries from that baseline. I'd get rid of that out of his repertoire. Love 30. If Newcomb ever wanted a break, he's got it here. This is the chance he wanted. Love 30 and New and uh, Connor's a little bit hesitant on these two points. Oh, just out. Out. 30 all. Beautiful double handed volley. Gets right down behind the ball and he looks so sure with it. Let. Connors taking time at 30 all after trailing love 30. <laughs> 40, 30. Jimmy got a good angle on that little passing shot there. Amazing how he controlled that shot. Connor's taking a lot of time, Frank. He slowed off in his uh, service preparation. Game, Connor's one game all. When he gets behind, he always takes his time. He doesn't hurry the uh, service action. If he's in front, he seems to get on with it. But uh, when he's behind, he likes to take his time, think about what he's doing. And that's a champion's way of approach, too. The more you hurry, the more mistakes, I would suggest. Yukum serving, southern end. One all, and the third. Love. Tell you what, if Connors was your rich uncle, you'd be in trouble. He gives nothing away, does he? <laughs> Out. 
15-0. Sheer surprise beat Newton. I think he'd won the point and couldn't believe he had to play a volley to finish That's it. That's right. Just well, a floater. Actually, Connors was going the opposite way when he served. Yes. God damn it. 30 15 30 oh if there's such a thing as luck in a match like this in this game I think that uh, Jimmy is just having a touch of his share a net cord and a surprised error from Newcomb. So it's 30 all. What a lob, for heaven's sakes. I can't get that! Forty, thirty. <laughs> He leads two games to one. I think Nuke deserves a lot of credit for that game. Things were running against him a bit from 30 love into 30 all. A net cord, a surprising error on his part when he was caught unawares when a ball suddenly shot back at him. But then he pulled out those big serves and the big smash. By G, he's got a tremendous heart. We commented yesterday when in his semi-final with Tony Roach, he was down and saved three or four. Four, four match points. Four match points he saved against Tony yesterday, and he was on his knees, literally, and then came back to win at 11-9 in the fifth. A magnificent match. Colin, and afterwards you remember on the courtside interview I did with him for television here in Australia, and uh, viewers through CBS in America would be interested in this, I said, did you realise you saved four match points? He looked at me and said, oh, did I? He was dazed, wasn't yeah, he? He didn't really know he'd save four match points. He was doing it from heart and memory. Tony Roach, one of the great competitors in the world, has come back for the benefit of our American viewers. Tony Roach on the comeback trail, won our, one of the major titles in Australia, the New South Wales Championship, only last, or well, ten days ago. And here yesterday appeared like the finalist as we have just said, had four match points on Newcomb. So look out in USA for Tony Roach, the left-hander. He's playing exceptionally well, but he just could not take the last point off this amazing character, Newcomb. Connors to serve. It's one set all now, and the game score, one, two, third set. Let... Fifteen love.
15. Cat and mouse? More like uh, clay court tennis, isn't it? Well, I think Connor's decided, Nuke, if you want it, I'll give it to you. We'll play it that way. And he would not come to the net. He wouldn't try to get to the net. They're employing a lot of uh, tactics out there, aren't they? Newcomb trying to, to break the rhythm of the attack and, and maybe having a little success. It's 30 all and it's 1 2. Point for a breakthrough to Newcomb. See what Connors does about it. Wind sprung up just a little stronger then. Probably heard it gusting into the microphones. Hold it. Very noticeably, the wind, Michael, just sprung up, sprang up as you were speaking. Uh -huh. For Connors, a danger point, this one. Second service to come, 30-40. Good ball. Out. Out. Yes. Well, it wasn't a very good volley of Jimmy's. He had a bucket of room and uh, he gave the redoubtable Mr. Newcomb a second go at it. Advantage server. Wind will help the swinging service. It's dying down again now as I speak. Not nearly as strong as that gust. Game, Connors. Two games all. Third set. Now a matter, Frank, of which one of the two players will either crack or the other player, the receiver, have some sensational shots. Which one? It's a it's a complete 50-50 guess, isn't it? A match like this generally hinges on one or two points, uh, Colin, and uh, sometimes it's luck that... Fifteen, love. Newcomb serving, northern end. Thirty love. Out. Forty love. You can still concentrating on that double handed side.
two service breaks in the whole match, which has uh, shown how remarkably these fellows have been serving. 13 games of each, Fang, and they've only dropped one in 13. That's pretty good going, isn't it? And there's been very few chances to break, really. The games have been exciting, etc., but um, I suppose the number of break points that have been, there have been would be on nearly on the, uh, well, 10 at the most. But we haven't had prolonged games, have we? No, it's been, they've been very short games, and the, generally the server's been up most of the time. Newcomb's been doing a good job. Yes, he is. Uh, Backhand, I, what do you think of it? Well, he's uh, returning Jimmy's serve quite effectively, and uh, you can see the pattern is that when he returns serve and Jimmy stays back, he then, when Jimmy approaches the net, he just goes for that lob. And he's quite happy to stay on the baseline and get that rally going, maintaining depth. I would think of the baseline rallies, and we've seen about eight or ten of them, very protracted ones, Newcomb would have a 7-3 edge. Well, he's got a great forehand, there's no doubt about that. And he's been hitting his backhand well in the last couple of days. He stepped it up a lot. One of our leading football officials here in uh, Melbourne just looked up at me, up to our uh, box here high in the northern <coughs> stand, above the centre court, and he indicated that the match could go either way. And I think that's a general feeling of people here. Well, how more level can you get? Service oh, break in right. each of the first two sets and the game with service. And now Jimmy has to answer the challenge. He's 2-3, his service to come. And he's serving with, I would think, a slightly slight aid of the breeze from this end. Just a fraction his way. Connors from the northern end. <laughs> so right. Love 15. Dangerous spot to volley unless you hit it extremely hard to the forehand of Newcomb. What's his strength? I thought that was out at 15. Oh, somebody calling out near one of the microphones, but uh, it looked out from here. It looked, it looked a fault from here, and the linesman was quite definite. He's been a regular linesman throughout the tournament, that same gentleman. I thought it was out. Thirty fifteen. <laughs> 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 Gonna get a few of our smart boys calling out if they're not careful. <laughs> and that looked good. Forty-fifteen. Umpire should take control of this quickly and stop yes. the noise. So easy for him to speak now. Frank, what do you think? I thought that last one was a good serve. Yes, it looked good from here, but uh, admittedly we're further than John Newcomb or the linesman. 40-15 to a whole service, Connors. Don't tell me he's going to serve a double. Forty-thirty. Well, he's won the crowd. Could cost him a match doing it, but uh, there were <laughs> just in conducted crowd. Then <laughs> stop. Uh, there were two calls that were doubtful. That's why I think Jimmy took that action. Foul. I think the crowd would now like him to win the game. Give him a go. Give him a go. Forty thirty. Oh. Oh. Try it, please. 
umpire take charge of the crowd please Frank, he's done a very nice gesture to the to John Newcomb, but uh, he's put himself to jizz by possibly doing that. Well, it's going to make it difficult for Newcomb if he gets in the same situation. He gets a bad call, and he's got to try and throw a point. Now let's see what the champion does, Jimmy Connors. Let's not forget he's the defending champion of the Australian title. Game. He leads four games to two in the third set. Didn't enjoy that game, I fear, as a spectator. I, uh, it was one of those things that the, the crowd got control of that game. And you said, Frank, two points could tell the difference in a, in a match. And uh, those two line calls are the two points. As yeah, right, please. Newcomb has done nothing wrong, he's done everything in his, in his right, but I'm sorry for John, uh, Jimmy Connors. Newcomb serving from the southern end, leading 4-2. Oh. Oh. Fifteen club. Thirty club. It's nine face, Newcomb. Connors has served three. And Jimmy Connors definitely off center at the moment. He's just slugging that shot across court straight to Newcomb's forehand volley. Foul. Forty fifteen. Double foul, 40, 30. Jimmy from one foot to the other, concentrating. He's got to get this break back. Can he do it? He leads 
five games to two. Well, there's Jimmy's mother watching up there in the stand. A little number anxious one at this stage. Big guys. Number one supporter. Yes, number one supporter. But believe me, and I say this quite advisedly and with all sincerity, Jimmy's got a lot of other supporters here in the stadium today. They appreciate his great tennis. Comes back to the rights and wrongs of giving points away, Michael. Um, Frank, you've played in it long enough. I'll accept your comment. Well, we always felt that you've got to accept the umpire's decision because if you don't, it could come to the stage when your opponent has to try, try and give you a point. And it might be a critical position. 30-40, what do you do? So, what do you do? You, can you give a point away? Or you just play the umpire's decision? But Frank, you have done it. Yes, but generally, Mike, when you're playing in a big title like this, you generally make an agreement to say, well, all right, we're going to play the umpire's decision and uh, you've got to take the good with the bad. But uh, we saw there that Jimmy gave the point away. Quite honestly, I thought the first one was a, a bad decision, but I thought the second one was OK. All right, Connor serving from the southern end, down 2-5 in the third. And we're nettled again as Jimmy's not wasting, he didn't waste any time, but clobbered. Let's see if he keeps that pace up. Yes, he's in cranky mood. 15 all. He'll win it or lose it quick, I think, the rest of the set. Fifteen thirty. Thirty all. Anticipation was perfect from Connors before Newcomb struck the ball. Newcomb was going in retreat, watching the lob. Foul. He leads five games to three. Newcomb, head down, going Correct. around in a slow circle. Just Newcomb leads five games to three. <laughs> <laughs> and Connor says, uh-uh. It has to be a little bit, but the crowd are doing all their best to stick with Jim as well, but uh, occasionally the Newcomb wave rises. Duke, 5 3, serving from the northern end. Foul. Second serve, and uh, Connor still stays behind the baseline to return. Double foul. Number five, Mike. Mm -hmm. Love 15. Nine aces and five doubles, whereas Jimmy Connors has had three aces and has not chalked up a double fault. <laughs> 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 
love 30. It's torn out by the roots, isn't it? You, oh, you can hear the whole feeling of the crowd. I think there's a cheer squad really on this eastern bank for, for Nuke, and they're the ones that are really rooting for him. Well, this is the first time he's been behind on a serve on a long, long time. Oh. Just wide, not by much. Trouble now. Well, Love 40. he had the benefit of a kick service that I don't think he deserved getting. He staggered back a return from Nuke, uh, from Connors, and then poor Nuke let himself be softballed. Foul. Badly wanting one of his serve, big services that just won't come at this critical moment. Gee, the executives of uh, CBS in America showed great foresight in organising this match. It's a great game of tennis. Yes, he's won. Yeah. He's come out. 30-40. Number 10. When they said they organised this match, they organised to take it, I mean, from Australia via satellite. Well, this is where he generally produces a big serve. He's got it, I think. It's going to be out. Out. Yes. The fighting qualities of both men down there are to be admired. Out. Connors on his toes, really wanting this point. <laughs> yes, Jimmy Boy. Oh, right. right, Advantage receiver. Tears into that shot. Leads five games to four. Fighting qualities shown by Jimmy Connors then. Hit some beautiful returns of serve. Although Newcomb served well in the clutch. Just mistimed that half volley that uh, popped up just in front of him. Should it go to the tiebreaker, Frank, which would be at six all? And it's uh, looking a distinct possibility again here. Could you see any advantage to either player because of their style of play in a uh, 12 point tiebreaker? Well, I think probably it would be with Newcomb with that serving. Uh, Jimmy, on odd occasions, stays at the baseline and tries to win points from the baseline, and that is taking a bit of a risk, I feel, in tiebreakers. Whereas uh, if Newcomb gets that serve working, a full and bore. Full bore, and he wins the uh, points rather easily, but I think it's an his advantage to win the tiebreakers. Frank, there's little or nothing between the two players. Oh, no, very even in the match. You summed it up before when you said luck's going to play a big part in this, the final result of this. Well, it might be luck, it might be just sheer brilliance that does those two points at the critical moment. I think Frank's right, that you, it comes a stage, you need them. That was a great game, wasn't it, from, to take it at, a, at that stage? That cross-court double-handed shot, that oh. juice. He tore it apart, didn't he? Connors down 4-5 in the third, serving from the northern end. Set each. <laughs> Love 15. 
Connors settling for the lob suddenly was completely beaten. A beautiful backhand from Newcomb. It's a balloon shot. Out. Out. Love, 30. Connors has got to fight hard again. Yes. See him take his time on these uh, next couple of serves. Out. You can three set points in hand. <laughs> He's taken the third. Game. Third set for Newcomb, six games to four. Looks as though they're going to take the break. Are they? Referee Jim Entick joins the discussion. Ladies and gentlemen, there will be... Met uh, Frank Sedgman, who's the big boss of tennis camps, to... I got a tie last year after... I haven't got it on at the moment. Come up. Linesman ready. Ball boys ready. Players ready. Play. Newcomb from the southern end. He took the first 7-5. Connors the second 6-3. Newcomb the third 6-4. Into the fourth. Fifteen, love. Stop. Let. Connors uh, has been hitting that double-handed cross court. I think he's got to change the direction occasionally. Go down the line. No, he did. <laughs> 40 left. I know you had in mind, though, Frank, that if he could get one, he could plaster it down the line, not just to uh, block one high and floating. Eleven aces. Newcomb. He leads one, one game below. Well, I think we now take a deep breath for Connors on this next game, Frank. Uh, I would suggest that uh, if Newcomb could do the miracle shots, this is the one he wants, isn't it? Certainly is, and uh, we'll be watching the way he handles the server, Jimmy Connors. He's been uh, trying to get that ball, chip it down low, and then do that lob. And the last game, he hit a couple of really good hard backhands, too, for winners, so... Connors has got a lot to think about. A sporting identity is the application and dedication to a game by these players is in the top echelon, isn't it? That's important. Connors from the southern end. Fifteen love. Well, Newcomb played a very innocuous backhand then. He 
no chance of getting through Connors that way. Falk. Forty love. Very good game by Jimmy Connors and the uh, score goes to one all and a lot of the crowd still coming back into the crowd, caught a little by surprise by the start of the game and not being allowed in of course whilst play is in progress. Yukon from the northern end. Fifteen left. Fifteen. Twelve aces, Newcomb has served, Connors has served three. Oh. Out. Thirty all. Oh. Newcomb's got that wide serve going like Gonzalez uh, used to hit it. Hit the, he hits a, hitting the line about two or three feet up from the uh, service line. Gives him the angle then. Jimmy, a lot of worry that serve. Oh. Oh. Let. You never cease to be amazed, Frank, at the power that a fellow like Newcomb puts on the second serve. You know, sort of worried about a double fault. He's had five, admittedly, that's all. Oh. Mm. Double fault. Oh. Yes. He serves a ball very hard, so you've got to expect a few double faults. But doesn't he serve it hard? The risk he takes. He's had six double faults for the match, <laughs> and uh, Jimmy none. Connors has not served one. Falk. Well, he served the deliberate one, but uh, I suppose technically you can count that. See, so it's that second shot that Connor's not doing enough with when Newcomb volleys. Connor's not doing enough with that second shot. Very defensive, isn't it? Mm. Out. Game, 
Newcomb. He leads two games to one. By contrast, the lobbing is uh, all in Newcomb's favour. Newcomb. Your son, Chris, is waiting behind me at the plate of entrance. Would one of you please go to the entrance? The owner of Ramble Rebel, KXJ918, would you please report to the top? Newcomb getting that wide serve going very well. Breeze is swinging up a bit, and of course, the end that Newcomb was serving from a position ready. At the southern end, as, New as Connors will serve. 1 2, fourth set. Let. Love. Looked like a good Newcomb rally, that one didn't it? And then yeah. suddenly he pushed one over the baseline, rather surprisingly. And Connors, a lot of running. Very lucky to get away with that point. <laughs> Fifteen all. Oh. This match is being played in remarkably fine spirit. Yes. Credit to both players. Oh. 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 So hot here in Melbourne, we have a, a few people who have fainted in the crowd and the St John's Ambulance boys are doing a magnificent job. Full marks to them. Yes, they are. They're a great uh, service, aren't they? Oh. Oh. Second ball, big point, right here. Forty thirty. They've got to get the lady out who's fainted, and uh, this is a very awkward position from just in front of us as a lady fainted, being be taken away. Oh. Oh. Connors, one, two, and Juice on service, and you can working like a beaver. Advantage server. Out. 
half. Mm, good game. game. Connors, two games off. Nothing much showing up so far in this uh, set, Frank. No, the, although Jimmy's having a little trouble holding serve. Newcomb's holding his serves much more comfortably than what uh, Connors is doing. Sheer pace and, and accuracy with it, of course. Newcomb serving from the southern end to all in the fourth. The nice that would be his 13th. 15 left. Did you say that, see the speed with which Connors acknowledged that and walked? Thirty love. Thirty fifteen. That second serve was almost as fast as the, fir as the first. <laughs> Seven double faults and 13 aces chalked up against Jay Newcomb. Funny game is at 30 love, and the next minute you're back to 30 all, and it's in the melting pot. Well, you've got two great players down there, Colin. Mm. That's great tennis. Well, wide to the double-handed side, then with the volley, wide to the backhand. No way that Connors can handle that. Flies in the air, which are darn nuisance, aren't they? Only a few, but they're, they stick with you like glue. Three games to two. Two years ago, John Newcomb was elated. All he wanted to do really was to win his own country's title, to win the Australian singles title. I think this one means even more to him than that first title here in Australia. To win this one a second time and to win it and beat the champ, I think the um, his cup of joy would be overflowing. Oh, golly. It would need to be something to surpass his... He's thrilled to win his first Australian. I think it would though, don't you yeah. really? Yeah, possibly, Colin. But by golly, he really wanted an Australian title. Yeah. He beat Oni Perron of uh, New Zealand, if I remember correctly. You're right, yes. A courageous fighter. We thought it was a good match, but never reached the heights that we've seen in these two games of the Roach, Newcomb, and now the Connors. I, I was going to comment before, uh, when the play started and obviously I had to keep keep get out of it was that uh, the two years we've watched these Australians and telecast them I felt the depth and the standard of these been tremendous I thought even better than this year Frank I don't think we had the depth of talent here uh, on the courts but but now we've got the benefit of having the great semi-final followed by the great final which even is better than anything we've seen and so many new faces too yeah Like both finals, the ladies and the men's have been international finals. Well, this is the way tennis is going. It's not a confined actually to America and Australia any longer. Or there's, the 10 or 12 uh, players. There's great players from all around the world. Connor's down 2-3 in the fourth, serving from the southern end. Out. 15, love. 
Connors to the backhand of Newcomb. Looks like he's going to work that pattern again hard. Tries one out of centre for variety. I've never seen a uh, tennis player feeling it long on before. Out. Out. 40, love. And they serve notice to each other early. Really. If you want a point, you're going to have to fight for it. Three games all. I think Newcomb will be thankful he had that 10-minute break, Frank. He's flexing his legs, but that 10-minute break should have uh, given him the stamina at least for one more, if not two more sets. Well, he can't falter now. He's got to, if he can keep the serving power going, he's, he's got a real good chance. Foul. Foul. <laughs> Beautiful shot, sir. Love 15. It's a very rare shot when you think back. There's been very few of those he's played today. Well, he's been hitting him cross court, and Newcomb's been volleying well off the forehead. Sitting on him up there. That was a glorious shot. And Newcomb steadies. Falcon. Second shot again. 15 all. Yes, you're right, Frank, because he had the opening, didn't he, then? And he pushed straight to it. It was uh, quite a couple of yards to get through when you come there. <laughs> 30 15. 14 aces. Connors has served three. Forty fifteen. Newcomb surprisingly keeping up this serving power. He uh, hasn't relaxed one minute. And there we saw another couple of aces. But Jimmy just can't do anything to handle that serve, Colin. Yes, it's uh, very hard. I'm just thinking the, the if you only had if he, either player had their break they could nurse through the opponent's service but they both face the position that they've got to not only hold service in fact essential they hold service but they've still got to get that one service break good lob in comes Newcomb he's got a sitter here and away it goes Lab 15 we may see a couple more lobs in this game because he's done them so well with such touch, it's worth a try. Love 15 at 3-4. Love 30. 
a stunner. Good call. Lap 40. Jimmy a little upset. He has a signal he doesn't he doesn't like the crowd, and that's with that racket handle. Fifteen forty. This is almost virtual match points, Colin. You feel that way? Well, that was a good service Frankie did then. See how Jimmy Connors can do a service. He's got two game points now facing him. He saved one for the break. Good return! He leads five games to three. Newcomb flexing every, every Quiet, body, piece of his body working for this one game, the one he wants. He can taste it. Where do you serve to Connors when the pressure's on? Do you swing them wide? Do you swing it down the line? What do you do? Well, I think he's got to do the same pattern as that goes with that double hander. Out. Club 30. I don't say there's going to be an anti-climax now. Lap 40. You have to be watching it on Channel 7 to believe it. It's happening, it's Love 40 now. And Connors just throwing every bit he's got into it. Fifteen forty. And the Newcomb fan club saying, Come on, John, you can hear them just about. Be about one or two miserable flies hanging around Johnny and he can't get rid of them. Out. Thirty forty. Did you see the speed that Newcomb went back? I have never seen him move faster. He was twinkling back. But that wasn't that volley that he made then was a fantastic volley. It wasn't on, was it? <laughs> and the crowd erupts with joy. Yes. Love 40, back to Juice, and he's within two points of match. <laughs> Good luck, Jimmy. <laughs> Advantage server. 
Match point. Crowd now will quiet, keep please. quiet. Thanks, umpire. Let's get this one. This point. Connors summing up every energy. Can he turn back this amazing Mr. Newcomb? Stop. Stop. <laughs> I think he's got it. No. It's out. It's out. <laughs> yes. And the crowd acknowledge a marvellous effort by the James Connors then. It is Juice and Newcomb has 5-3, two sets to one. He's broken through and this is now leading into another chance maybe for him to win the match. Foul. Great lob. Receiver. And Newcomb did a roll and tumble that he fell well and he's only taking the time that he needs to get himself settled and balanced because he can't lose this point unless Connors takes it. What a great lob at that oh, time, Connors, critical time. How's his effort Connors been in this game? And Newcomb's. Foul. Well, throws the weights a little bit towards Jimmy, doesn't it? The second service to come. Any ball be hit harder than that ball then? I'm stunned, Frank. I am stunned, literally. <laughs> Poor Newcomb. How do you feel for the man? One match ball he's had, and his volley, which was the winning volley, missed by what? An inch and a half? Only a couple of inches, I'd say. Yeah, maybe two or three inches, but it was floating across, and until it actually hit the chalk, or it missed the chalk, you had hopes for Newcomb he could have got it. And for, for Jimmy Connors, who theoretically, he had, what, he had love 40? Yes. It got back to Juice with Newcomb playing out of his head and then it was Connor's turn to play some amazing stuff and he, with that last shot that Frank said was, was truly a bullet-like shot hit with complete abandon for the winner and now Connor's has his service to level at five all in the fourth set. It's still a chance for Newcomb because Connor's serve has been a possibility, would you say, for yes. Newcomb? He hasn't served well. He's had one break against him this set. That's uh, a bit of proof on the board. And Newcomb's been exploiting that lob very well. The last game on Connor's serve, he got that ball over Connor's head consistently. And Jimmy's got to try and get that volley a bit firmer and a bit deeper to stop Newcomb from doing this. But uh, it's been a fantastic match up to the present time. We'll feel sure that our overseas and our Australian viewers <laughs> will be appreciating this tremendous match with a great hand then for Jimmy Connors who saved a match point on the last service game of Newcomb, now serves at 4-5 in the fourth set, he trails one set to two. Love. 
30 low. Right back into it, Frank. Love. And after that first point with a miracle volley from Connors, two sloppy shots from John, maybe a little wary, maybe just saving energy. Game, Connors, five games all. The drama we've seen this week has been just amazing. <laughs> Yesterday and today, Frank, it makes you feel very weak at the knees, doesn't it? Men's tennis has been out of this world. It's been great. Newcomb the server, 5-all, 4th set. <laughs> 15 above. Six points Connors took in a row there to win the... Uh, make it 5-4 and then hold service, so Newcomb now has taken a point, the 7th. Balls, 17 service aces to John Newcomb, two in a row then, and uh, I suppose most of the crowd are saying, why didn't you do it in the previous game? Do you reckon that would be the, the call? I bet he's saying that to himself. <laughs> well, it's been a great exhibition of serving. Oh, yes. Well, the, you've got to give credit to Connors. We know that he hasn't got uh, as devastating a serve as Newcomb, and he's only had three aces, but he's only had one double fault. And uh, that's the one he threw away when those line calls upset players a little bit. He threw, literally threw a double fault. Other than that, he has been the model of consistency. And he's held service. What? He's missed one, two, he's lost three services in the match. Well, what's it going to be like if Connors holds his serve this time we go into the tiebreaker? Well, I'm going to sit back and take a couple of deep breaths along with a lot of people. I was watching the crowd, uh, looking at the crowd, uh, during one of those rallies, Frank, and uh, earlier Jim Entink, the referee, had requested they keep silent and do not move, meaning do not move between uh, uh, during the rallies or between points, but wait till the end of the game to change and move around. And I think the crowd was stunned. There wasn't a sign of movement as they were glued onto the court. Both players ready to get back into the fray. Jimmy Connors, you can see there, who just unleashed power, moves up. And uh, at the same time, John Newcomb at the uh, southern end. And it's now Connors with Newcomb. One more chance before the tiebreaker. Can Johnny break through? He jogs around, limbers up. A habit of his, that uh, full knee bend. And now Connors to serve. New balls. That improves Connors' chance just that little bit. Fifteen love. Would you suggest that John Newcomb should take courage in both hands and have a go or keep get that ball back into play, Frank? Well I think he should get the ball back into play because Connors hasn't been doing enough with that volley. He did it then, it but that was the first time that he's uh, really put a volley away for a long time. Oh! 
Uh, oh. That was a bad return too, it was a high float here. Yes, down at his feet, that's what Nick's got to do. Out. Good ball. Yeah, I thought he wasn't going to call it for a while. Caught. 30 15. From a good service, you can play an amazingly good return that floated and dropped. It was a funny ball, wasn't it? And caught Connors Brook quite badly in two minds. And a reprieve for John Newcomb as the score is 30 15. The score 5 6 in the fourth set. <laughs> 40 15. Looks like a tiebreaker coming up, Frank. Then the tension will be on. Yes, well, we'll just explain a little about the tiebreaker should we get there. Foul. Gently. Out. Out. Game. Connors. Six games all. The tiebreaker will now commence. Frank, please tell me, tiebreaker, how it works. Newcomb serves the first point, then Connors takes two, and then they re rotate every two points after that. And Ch that. Changing ends after six points. And, and it is a 12 point tiebreaker. 12 point tiebreaker. Frank. You can lead one point to love. It's been pointed out so often, and we repeat it, that the service is tremendously advantageous in the tiebreaker. So New Connors has two services now. Newcomb will be striving desperately to get at least one of these two points. It looks like the down the line shot and he gets half a chance as the one with Connors guarding the centre. It's love two on the tiebreaker. Newcomb leads two points to one. Position good for Newcomb right now, Frank. Right now he's got the slight advantage. Dear, oh dear, that was nearly the lob of all lobs, wasn't it? <laughs> wasn't it? <laughs> About three inches with Newcomb whooping it out. Let. Four points to one. Whee! Connors can't afford to make one mistake here now on these two serves. No, he's, so he's in a very tough situation because he's got to play the point safe. He can't afford to really go for any spectacular shot. Where, whereas oh. Newcomb can have a go now. He can have a go at the second serve. Newcomb feeding him the forehand. Look at him opening the hole of the forehand court up and saying, hit it there.
Frank, I'm starting to feel it in my tummy again. I remember <laughs> yesterday at the end of that match, I think you were the same, weren't you? You sort of get a sensation of, of it, it's got to stop soon. I don't want any more of this. And this, that rally with Newcomb throwing up three lobs and finally one dropping out by about two or three inches. Previously we saw Connors throw a lob which just went out. But I didn't like the way Jimmy approached that lob, that smash, I mean, you know, he just was very tentative tentative about it. All right, it's 2-4. We see one more service coming from Connors, and uh, obviously for Connors it's, it's, it's vital that he holds this point. He must hold this point. <laughs> he has. Newcomb leads four points to three. Jimmy's still got to win one point back. Even John's concentration slightly off centre as he goes to the wrong side. Head down. Right, it's on now. And it's 4-2, four 4-3, four Newcomb. <laughs> and Connors is doing the same the other end. Having great fun with the fly. Dear, oh dear, oh dear. If Newcomb can come up after that shot, he's a genius. Get out. Out. Newcomb leads five points to four. And Connors knows it was out. He's play acting, but. Uh, well, for heaven's sakes. What, an inch? Two it wouldn't inches? wouldn't even be an inch, I don't oh, think. Oh, dear, oh, dear. <laughs> so Newcomb now, it's 4-5, but the next two points are services for Connors. If Newcomb can stagger one of these two points, he then sits in a box position for the set. But he's got to get one of these two. And who blames Connors for taking his time? Almost it's almost the first time he's gone down the forehand side on that court. One of the very best services he's thrown in for the match, Frank. Five all in the tiebreaker. Six points to five. Connors doesn't have to win friends at Kuyong, but if ever a man is winning friends, he is with this amazing fight back to the stage he even has the advantage. He's now. got a set point now. Yes, he has a set point after miraculous shots. At six all, Frank, the story is now that the players change ends without sitting down or taking time. They can tell as they pass the net and they have to win two points clear. Does the player, Newcomb for example, now stay at the northern end for six points? Yes. Thanks, Frank. So we're into the advantage part of the tiebreaker. Newcomb has one service that end. If Newcomb wins this service point, he stands at match point. And I, if either player, it's a set point if either player wins this point. Okay. Seven points to six. Frank, he's a sensational player. Godfather, he's sensational. 
he hooked that ball back. I thought the ball was off the end of his racket. It was. And uh, somehow got over the net for a winner. Set point for Jimmy Connors. This is his second this set point. Second match point. Second match point. Thanks, Frank. Newcomb has Five, a match please. point. Quiet. The umpire can't even get the uh, scores across. It's a standing ovation which goes on and on. as soon as the boys have recovered from that wonderful match. I'll try again. Game, <laughs> set and championship to Jane Newcomb. Three sets to one. <laughs> seven, five, three, six, six, four, seven, six. Thank you, linesmen. Thank you, ball boys. And thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, if we may have your attention now for the president of the Lawn Tennis Association of Australia, Mr. Wayne Reid. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Reid. Mr Hurley, Mr Young, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, you'll appreciate that before making the formal presentation, there are a lot of people to be thanked for making this such a wonderful tournament. If you would bear with me and not clap until the end, it will help us. This has been a fantastic tournament and we would like from the LTAA to convey our thanks to the Lawn Tennis Association of Victoria, on whose courts the championships were held, to the tournament committee headed by Mr. Jeff Kerr, to the referee, Mr. Jim Antic, to the umpires, to the groundsmen, the ball boys, the usherettes, the news media, to Michael Williamson, who has done such a fabulous job down here on the centre court during the championships, to John Brown and his staff from TCA, and to the staff of both the Lawn Tennis Association of Victoria and Australia. You have all seen what I believe uh, these people have 
the job that these people have done. They've excelled themselves. And uh, I think we're all moving to what is our mutual dream and goal, and that is of making the Australian Championships equal to any championship in the world. And I want to thank them very sincerely. I mentioned during the recent commercial, uh, commercial Union Masters what a wonderful job the police and St John's Ambulance people have done here at the Championships and how they go unnoticed. And I'd just like to present, if, on, a, on your behalf, a little bouquet of flowers to the supervisor of the St John's Ambulance to convey a, a little token of our appreciation. We appreciate what wonderful support we've had from you, the public, and we hope that you've enjoyed this event and will come back for more, and in play more tennis too. But no show could go on without punch, and that is the players. To the players, thank you for what has been simply marvellous tennis. I think you're like a Father Christmas to, to Australia and to Kuyong, and please keep coming back for Christmas in Australia. <clears throat> Lastly, but not least, I must thank Mr Hamilton Hurley, the Managing Director of Philip Morris. You'll all appreciate that this tournament would not have been possible without Philip Morris's support. We, the tennis lovers of Australia, are indebted to Philip Morris. Now, John, if you're fit enough to come and receive your trophies. Mr Hamilton Hurley, the Managing Director of Philip Morris, is presenting John with the winning cheque. <laughs> there are two trophies to present to John, and I'd ask Mr John P Young, the President of the Victorian Association, to present the cha Victorian Championship trophy. Um, Mr. Reid, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, it gives me very great pleasure indeed to present to John Newcomb this trophy that has some very famous names on it. The names are John Newcomb and Jimmy Connors. Congratulations. This is the permanent trophy for the Australian Championships which John is to hold again for 1975. Congratulations, John. Well, Christmas hasn't been the same in Australia for the last two years without Jimmy Connors. He's really made it for us. It would be inappropriate to say anything else, but Jim, you're welcome back in Australia any time. Thank you, Mr. Reid. 
Jimmy, I know you've had a hard match out there, but you can't get off the court without saying a few words. You're going home without the title, but believe me, you're going home with a lot of friends. Jimmy Connors. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. I guess uh, Mr. Wee Reed thanked about everybody possible, except himself. So, Mr. Reed, thank you for everything. Uh, I guess everybody here connected with the tournament has done their job uh, to perfection to make uh, the Australian Championships, in my mind, in my heart, one of the top four titles in the world today. And I don't know, I wish Newcomb would have stayed home this year again. I'd go for two in a row, maybe. No, but you know, you can't win all the time. Why not, they say. <laughs> no, but for me, it was a great pleasure to come to Melbourne again for the Australian Championships. And I think uh, more that, maybe more now this year than next year, than last year, I'm sorry, that, uh, you know, I'm enjoying playing tennis a lot more. And, you know, I come over here to, to play all the Australian players and to play Newcomb in the fun. And, <laughs> And in all seriousness, it was uh, just a great pleasure for me again to play the final here. And maybe if I come back next year, which I hope I can, I'd be here again. Thank you. Jimmy Connors, ladies and gentlemen. A wonderful sportsman. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't know whether a tennis player has ever been swabbed. But if, if you have a look at Nuke's history lately, it hasn't been too good. He struggled through one of the early rounds against an unknown German called Goering. And uh, uh, Masters took him to five sets. Rochi took him to five sets here yesterday. And he comes out here today and beats the number one in the world. So that speaks for... <laughs> I'm sorry about that, Jimmy. But Nuke did it, not me. Ladies and gentlemen, the new Australian men's singles champion, John Newcomb. Actually, Mike, uh, I found a secret this year. I, I studied Ken Rosewell very closely, and um, for the first time for many years, I gave up that tasty brown stuff during the Christmas and New Year period. <laughs> it seems to work. <laughs> uh, when I was in my early 20s, it used to make me feel better, but now it just makes me feel slow, so I gave it away. Uh, I'd like to thank everyone for wonderful tournament and especially the crowd here you certainly turn out uh, magnificent lead with the test on and uh, in this tournament this tournament supported terrific support and there's just one thing uh, I'd like to say commiserations to to Jimmy and uh, a lot of things have been written in the press I guess they've been played up a little bit but uh, today I think <laughs> today I think that uh, Jimmy proved uh, to me, and I'm sure he proved to everyone in Australia who is watching on television and here today that a champion has to know how to win and how to lose, and he proved to me that he's a true champion today. Thank you. Well, ladies and gentlemen, Nobody could ever say that sportsmanship is dead after you hear from such fine gentlemen as Jimmy Connors and John Newcomb. They're wonderful.